caring for your child's peripheral nerve catheter. Let your nurse or doctor know if you need an interpreter. Hello, I'm Dr. Holland and I am an anesthesia doctor. We are the doctors that give the sleep and pain medicine to keep your child safe and comfortable during their surgery. We are also the doctors that place your peripheral nerve block. So, I want to describe how we control pain during your child's surgery and for up to three days after. While your child is asleep, we place a tube, also known as a catheter, like this one, under the skin and next to the nerves that carry the pain messages. This tube carries numbing medication that blocks pain messages in the same way as the numbing medication used by the dentist. As you can see, the tube is held in place with a transparent bandage. The green arrow shows where the catheter enters the skin. To this tube, we attach a balloon pump. We also call this the medicine ball or the cue ball or on cue pump. It's all the same. This pump can deliver numbing medicine for several days. This pump is really neat. It uses the power of the expanded balloon to deliver the medication. It doesn't require batteries nor needs to be plugged in. So it is very safe and you won't have to adjust anything. Just a reminder, do not remove any labels from the pump or its tubing. See this dial? It controls the flow of numbing medicine. This is how the anesthesia doctor sets the desired amount of medication that's appropriate for your child's pain. You won't have to adjust anything. This is the clamp that will stop the flow of medicine if closed. It should remain open and move freely along the tubing. It is there if you need to stop the flow of medication or when it's time to remove the catheter, and we'll discuss that later. Going home with the medicine pump. So we'll send you home with a small pack. It has a waist or a shoulder strap to carry the pump. A couple things to remember. The pump works best at room temperature. So the pump shouldn't be worn inside clothing like a jacket unless you're outside and it's freezing cold. Likewise, the pump should not be kept under blankets especially heated blankets or heating pads or near cold or hot packs. Lastly, if you have a pet that likes to chew on things, try to keep the pet away from the pump. We will send you home with a bag of supplies so you can care for your child at home. In it, you will find some gauze, alcohol swabs, clear bandages, an adhesive bandage, gloves, and some adhesive remover. You will also be provided with written care instructions that you should read over. The main goal is to keep the site clean and dry. At the end of three days, you'll remove the catheter, you know, the tube. I know the last bit sounds scary, but it's a lot easier than it sounds. So let's start with keeping the catheter site clean. Your biggest job will be to make sure the area is kept clean and the clear bandage remains in place. First, it is common for a little clear fluid to leak from the site. This is very normal. If it looks like a lot to you, give the anesthesia doctor a call. The clear bandage should remain in place protecting the site. If it starts to loosen, you should place another clear bandage over the original one after you've cleaned the exposed area with an alcohol swab. If by chance the original bandage was so loose that the site of the catheter where it enters the skin was exposed or somehow got dirty, then the tube needs to be removed, and we'll discuss that later. If the tube is in your child's arm or shoulder area, your child will be sent home with a sling to support that arm. This is because your child's arm might feel weak or funny, and the sling is there to protect it. If the tube is in your child's leg or lower half of the body, you will want to check for weakness before your child gets up. Support them as they stand and have them tell you if they feel steady on their feet before you let them go. 
If they were provided crutches, make sure they use them as instructed. One last thing, if your child needs an MRI, the catheter will need to be removed. Other forms of imaging like x-ray, CT, and ultrasound do not require the removal of the catheter. When should I call the anesthesia doctor? The tube and pump provide a very safe way to control pain following surgery, but nothing is perfect. There are times when a person may have an undesired reaction to the medication. There are other times that a parent just needs to know if this or that is normal and needs attention. The telephone number for the anesthesia doctor can be found in the written instructions. So here are some very rare things to look out for. First, if your child is having difficulty breathing or looks like they are not responding in a normal manner, then close the medicine clamp on the tube and call 911. They may ask you to read what medication is being used. You can read or spell out the medication from the label. If your child complains of numbness or tingling of the lips or mouth or has ringing in their ears, then again clamp the tube and call the anesthesia doctor. Likewise, if your child has a sudden increase in anxiety or complains that they just don't feel right but can't explain why, then clamp the tube and call the anesthesia doctor. If your child has a metal taste in his or her mouth, then call the anesthesia doctor. Likewise, if there is redness or swelling around the tube where it enters the skin, then call the anesthesia doctor. During the first night, your child may experience an increase in pain or maybe a change in the feeling where the surgery was done. This is normal. This can happen when the anesthesia doctor uses a stronger medication during surgery and that medicine is now wearing off. It's usually okay, but if you're concerned, call the anesthesia doctor. Finally, if you're not sure whether or not to call, then you should probably call. It's better to be a little overcautious. We understand. Other medications. Make sure you give your child any other medications prescribed by the surgeon, the doctor who's doing the surgery. It's really important to follow the directions as printed on the label or as provided in written instructions. If at any time you're uncertain about which medications to give or how often, you should call the surgeon. Unless directed otherwise by your surgeon, we recommend that your child take an appropriate dose of Tylenol, also known as acetaminophen, around the clock as prescribed. This means that whether or not your child complains of pain, give the Tylenol every four to six hours as prescribed by the surgeon. Your surgeon may also prescribe an anti-inflammatory medication like ibuprofen. You may know it as Advil or Motrin. These can help reduce pain since pain is often caused by swelling or inflammation. In some cases, the surgeon will have you alternate between Tylenol and ibuprofen. Occasionally, the surgeon may prescribe another medication for muscle spasms or cramping called diazepam or Valium. Even mild spasms or cramping can be annoying. So if your child is experiencing these spasms or cramps, even if you can't see them yourself, you should give this medication as your surgeon prescribed. Also, the surgeon will prescribe an opiate or narcotic pain medication like oxycodone to be taken as needed. Now, some children may not need this medication, but many do. Every child and every surgery is different, so it's important to judge the need for additional pain control by your child's apparent comfort and provide pain medication as needed. Remember, opiates should only be given as prescribed. If you need a reminder, look at the medicine label for instructions on how often and how much the pain medication can be given. If you're in doubt, you should call the surgeon. Pain is an interesting thing in that it is easier to control if treated early. So if your child is experiencing pain and it is time for additional pain medication, do not hesitate. That said, if your child is experiencing pain and it's too early for a dose of medication, then call your surgeon for further advice. Removing the catheter. 
The thought of removing the catheter is always scarier than actually removing it. It's all right to ask for a family member or a friend to help out. Around the time of removing the tube, give your child a single dose of pain medication, even if they didn't need it before. This will cover any increase in pain after the numbing medication has stopped. Remember not to give it within four hours of a previous dose unless approved by your surgeon or anesthesia doctor. We also recommend removing the tube early in the day, at least four hours before dinner, because that gives enough time to know if your child will require more pain medication before bedtime. It goes without saying, having uninterrupted sleep is good for your child and their parents. So here we go, step by step. Step one, this is the clamp that will stop the flow of medicine if closed. Close the medicine clamp on the tube, then in a gentle voice, tell your child that it's time to remove the tube. Sometimes it helps to provide a distracting toy or something to do on a smartphone or tablet, anything to lower any fears your child may have. Step two, wash your hands with soap and water or a cleaning gel like Purell. Step three, open the supplies provided and lay them out near your child. Lay out the gloves, the adhesive remover pad, the gauze bandage, and the adhesive bandage. Step four, put on the gloves. Open the adhesive remover pad. The gauze bandage and the adhesive bandage. Please do not use scissors to remove the bandages. Step five, gently remove the clear bandage around the tube. The adhesive remover pad makes this much easier. When you get close to where the tube enters the skin, hold the tube in place with a finger. Then continue loosening the clear bandaging. Step six. Once most of the clear bandage is released, hold the tube between your fingers. With gentle, steady pulling, slide the tube out from underneath the skin. This may cause a strange sensation but should not be painful. Just a little warning here. If the tube seems to be stuck or your child complains of a sharp shooting pain, then stop, place a clear bandage over the site and call the anesthesia doctor. Don't plan for this. It does not happen very often. We want you to know just in case it does. Once the tube is completely removed, dab the site with gauze and place an adhesive bandage. Write down the date and time it was removed in case your anesthesia doctor wants that information. One last step. Step seven, place the pump and all the tubing in a plastic bag and toss it in your regular garbage. As a parent or caretaker, it is often hard to know what is normal for your child and what is not. We understand and we will call you at least once a day to make sure all is going well. But at any time, at any hour, night or day, if you are not sure whether or not to call the surgeon or an anesthesia doctor, then you should call. An on-duty nurse or doctor will discuss your observations and determine the best course of action for your child. This is all part of our care and there's no cost to you. We all wish your child a speedy recovery.